Hey, good morning, good morning, Mountain Movers Church. We hope you're having a great morning with your family in your jammies. Right. You're joining us this morning uh, at the Helton House. We're here at our kitchen table. And um, we want to bring to you this morning our version of Families and Jammies 2.0. This is actually part four of this series that we've been in, 2020 Vision. I hope you've enjoyed this series because we've really been trying to refine our focus uh, for what God wants us to see the perspective that he wants us to have as we move into this new year. And we really believe that the, that the message behind this series is gonna help each and every one of us. It's gonna help you to find the right positioning, the right alignment, the right um, trajectory and momentum to really experience your best year yet, for, to experience all of the, the, the promises and all the great things that God has in store for you. So we hope you've enjoyed it so far. So we're gonna start off this morning with just a question and I want you to just ponder this, okay? So the question is this, have you ever felt disappointed by God? Now immediately the super spiritual are like, oh no, we've never been disappointed, but let's get real, okay? Has there ever been a time that you were praying and asking God and believing for something and it just didn't happen, right? And there's this disappointment that happens inside. Maybe you are expecting God to open a door and you've been expecting God to open that door and it's just not opening, you right. know? And you are, maybe you're, you're praying for that new job and you're believing that God's going to promote you or he's going to give you this new opportunity and you're just not seeing it. So these, this morning we really want to dive in talking about this disappointment because honestly the truth is we've all had those moments sure. where we feel like, God has let us down. There's this inner turmoil, this emotion of disappointment. And I want to talk to you for a moment about that as we dive into part four today, alignment for life, because we've all experienced it. And really, I want you to think about it. When we have disappointment, what we really have is unmet expectations. Okay. For example, everybody says that guys cannot understand girls, right? Is it true? I think it's true. I think it's true. Okay. I think we've been sometimes married. girls speak a different language. We've been married almost what? We've been together about have 20 years. Have you seen years. my shirt? I... Have you seen my shirt? You guys have to see my shirt. I don't know if you guys can Ch see it or not. Out. All right. So it says, I never dreamed I'd end up marrying the perfect freaking wife, but here I am living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Janet. I love it. I saw the shirt Thanks, and I Janet. was like, oh my gosh. I have to own that. So and Misty said, you have to wear that. So often, guys say you just can't understand girls, right? And a lot of times, as women, as wives, we have these unspoken expectations, expectations. for our husband, okay? And so we expect him to be able to read our mind and to do the things that we want him to do. It's true. You know it is. You're laughing right now in your jammies. <laughs> I know it because I do it. And Brad and I have been married 19 years and I'm still there's times that I'm just like why should I have to tell you that like I'm expecting you to get in there and do those dishes that have been sitting there because you know I haven't had time and yet I don't want to ask well listen to me disappointment comes from unmet expectations and so it's the same thing in our walk with God and even today guys today is a perfect example all right we had planned and right. prepared and set the goal of opening our new home, our new right. sanctuary right. today, January 19th, 2020. Unmet expectations. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Right? So as we worked so hard for two weeks, and I mean, volunteers killed it, contractors stayed late, all trying to help us get to this, this date, to this goal, to be in that new building today, Obviously, that wasn't God's plan because when we talked to the inspector and he said, guys, it's just not possible. Not I can't be out there on Friday yeah. to inspect you. So immediately, we had a decision to make, okay? Immediately, there's this, oh, this emotion that happens that says I'm disappointed. And then the next emotion from disappointment is what? Frustration? Anger? Attitude problems? God, why didn't you work this out? What are you doing? Do you even know what you're doing, God? Where like, are you? This is a good thing, God. Why wouldn't you make it happen? Obviously, wouldn't you want to open up this building? Wouldn't you want people to come yeah. and hear about you? What are you doing, what God? What are you doing? What are yes. you doing? We were ready for the grand opening, had that message ready to roll, and now what? Now we now we got to do something different? Right. Listen, God is in the business of shaking things up, okay? Yeah. Our timing and his timing will not 
always won't be the same. Be the same. They're not going to align. And so we've got to realize, and that's what we're really talking about today, is that God wants us to align our life with his plan, mm -hmm. but we've got to be okay when we can't see mm -hmm. what he sees. Right. We've got to learn to be at peace when things don't turn out the way we wanted them to turn out because right. we set expectations that God never promised. Yeah. To fulfill. So 2020 vision is, is about perspective. It's, it's about the way that you see things. It's about the way God wants you to see things. And it makes me think about, uh, you know, these glasses that I'm wearing. And some of you might be saying right now, Brad, I don't even know you wore glasses. Well, I do sometimes. Um, I actually have, it's funny, I actually have 2020 vision. Um, so you say, well, are these glasses just for looks? No, I have something <laughs> called called vertical deviation. Okay, right? can I explain? Can I tell them? No. Yes, I want to. It's it's Let me my tell you. symptom. I Hold should on. be able to explain. You don't even I want to tell you. So stupid. When I first met Brad, I was like, what's vertical deviation? What does that actually mean? I tell your version then I'll tell you. Okay. Me. So what it means is that one eye, though it has perfect 2020 vision, it kind of looks up. Shut up. <laughs> and one eye, though it has 2020 vision kind of looks Both down. Both of them are 2020. So, perfect eyes, cockeyed. <laughs> All right, so now my side. So when I was about 12 years old, I went in for a routine eye inspection. Inspection? Examination. Examination. Whatever. So, you know, you're, I'm, I, they have that machine uh, with all the lenses, click, 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 up to my, up to my eyes. And um, he did this one uh, thing where this red line, you know, is right across. Um, I can see with both eyes and he said tell there's two lines tell me when they come together all right two red lines so they were he said all right they should be one red line and I said no I see two red lines he's like really interesting <laughs> he said how about now it's like nope they're getting closer he said okay how about now nope almost there getting hotter how about now and finally those two red lines came together and he said guess what he said you have vertical deviation I'm like what's that He's God like, guys. well, so my eye, if I close one eye like this, 2020. If I close the other eye, 2020. But they, their line of sight are different. Are not aligned. It's not really cockeyed. It's just not together. <laughs> so anyway, so if I don't have my glasses, um, I have a tendency to see double because everything is just, it's off. I don't see things clearly with clear focus. So what they did was they put this, um, I, think, I think it's really cool, you might be really bored right now, but in these glasses, in the, in the lens, one of them, there's, there's, there's nothing. But in the other one, there's a prism, and that prism, you remember when you were in science class, like in the seventh grade, and you shed light through a prism, and the refraction ch makes the light change courses to a different <laughs> angle? That's what this lens is doing. So it's 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 changing my line of sight to come down, down to make it level with the other eye so that I can see very clearly and so that I don't have double vision. And 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 so when I think about when I was thinking about the sears, I thought, oh man, that's so cool. What what a powerful metaphor when we think about when when we are not looking by God's prescription, when mm -hmm. we're not looking with his prism, that he's placed in our uh, in our glasses the way he wants us to see things we see double we we don't see things clearly we're out of focus it's it's not it's not a true picture of reality but when I put my glasses on I can see things the way they are right and so a lot of times like Misty was talking about with this building project with maybe whatever's going on in your life um, maybe you've been, you know, praying and asking God for, for, uh, for this, this job opportunity. You've put in, uh, your resume and you've been calling every day and you've just been really, really putting the pressure on, uh, HR to hire you for this position. And it's just not working out. What you're doing is you're looking at the situation without, without God's perspective and you're seeing double. You're not seeing things clearly. You're not seeing reality based on God's perspective.
because you don't really know for sure what God wants. It might look like a good thing because you're going to be making more money. Uh, maybe you're going to, it's going to allow you to move to a nicer area and, 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 and move into a, a nicer home for your family. I understand all those things, but just because it's, it seems like a good thing doesn't mean it's a God thing. God wants us to align ourselves, to bring alignment in our focus to see things the way he sees things. I love the scripture, Romans 8 and 28. It says, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All things. That's not some things. That's all, all, everything. It all comes together. Right. When you've truly put God first, when you, and we've talked about this over and over and over and over and over, when you put God first, yeah and you're in right positioning with him, when you've put your relationship with him first, when you've trusted him in the tithe, and you say, God, I, 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 you are my everything, yeah. you are my top priority, it's all about you, then his provision and his protection comes into play. Yeah. It goes before you, he precedes you as a shield. That's right. He goes before you, providing and protecting. And when you're in that right positioning with him, all things work together for the good of those who love God who are called according to his purpose. So it's yeah. not by what you see, right. but it's about what you know, that God's got this. No matter okay. what it looks like, no matter how it seems, God's got it. It may not turn out the way you expected it to turn out, yeah. but you have to know that in, with God and his sovereignty, He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's all-wise. Trust Him. You know, so often, because we have an expectation, we think about the things that we want. We pray about the things that we want. We think about them in our head, and we figure out this perfect picture. And the problem with that is that we don't see into the future. So God already knows what He's trying to line up for you. He knows what he's trying to line up. He knows what needs to happen in order to get you where he wants you to be. And at the same time, we don't see that. We only see the circumstances and the external things right in front of our face. And it makes me think about Abraham. All right? So if you have your word this morning, go with me. Look, I've got my Bible. I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 18, okay? If you were with us last week, I told you that I'm nearsighted. Correct? That means I have to get close. So you were making fun of me for having vertical deviation. We all have problems. And you're blind. <laughs> I have 20-20 vision. Whatever. It's off a little bit, but you're blind. We all have issues. I, I'm looking up my, this passage on on you version. If you don't have if you don't have a paper Bible, you can do the same thing. What what did you say that scripture was? Romans chapter four, right. verse 18, and I'm going to be reading out of the NLT. Okay, this is the version that I prefer today. So it says this. Even when there was no reason for hope, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. Mm -hmm. He kept believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham and his faith, sorry, and Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. That was his wife. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. I love that. In fact, get this. In fact, his faith grew stronger. Okay, if you have your version or you have your Bible, get it out, highlight it. His faith grew stronger. Stop. I want you to think about this for just a second, and then I'm going to finish, finish up this passage. Abraham was 100 years old. That's crazy. God had promised him that he was going to be the father of many nations, yet he didn't have any children. Okay? And so Abraham, if he's looking at his actual circumstances, it looks impossible. Right. I mean, honestly, he's probably having one of those moments going, I, did I imagine this? He's seeing double. He's seeing double. Like, did I just dream this up? Did I have pizza the night before and thought I had a vision from God and I didn't? Did God really talk to me? Did God really make a promise? I mean, the enemy will cause you to question in those moments of darkness, in those moments of 
uncertainty, in the moments of disappointment, did God really say, like, should you really have planted this church? I mean, should you really be doing what you're doing? Did God really say? Okay. <laughs> Abraham says he never wavered in his faith because he believed God's promise. Not only that, but his faith actually grew stronger. Let me finish up this verse. And in this, he brought glory to God. What brought glory to God? The fact that everybody else around him saw him standing in faith. Everybody else saw him being 100 years old, standing on a promise when they all thought, you're probably crazy. There's no way Sarah's having a baby. There's no way you're going to have any children. You're way too old his faith grew stronger it brought glory to god finish it up verse 21 he was fully convinced that god is able to do whatever he promises and because of abraham's faith god counted him as righteous or in right positioning with god listen to me we have got to stop looking at the problems in our life we all have them. I told Brad earlier today, we all have problems. And if I get all my problems taken care of today, the financial problems and the relationship problems and all the challenges of life, all the things that are weighing on our mind and weighing us down, as soon as we get those things taken care of, tomorrow comes. And tomorrow we'll have another set of challenges, another set of problems. And I really don't like to call them problems, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm calling them that. Because I want you to stop focusing on the problem and start focusing on the promise. Okay, the P words match. So, listen to me. We all have problems. Abraham had a problem. He was old. And yet God had said, I promise you, you're going to be the father of many nations. He held on to that promise. What is it that God has told you? What is it that you're holding on to? What is it that you're believing God for in 2020? Don't give up. Right. Stand strong. Let your faith grow even stronger. Even when the external circumstances look like there's problems surrounding you, stand on the promise of God. And if you say, well, I'm not sure what God has promised me, then listen. Get in his word. That's right. His word promises that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. That if you put him first, he will provide for all of you your needs yes, if will. you will test him in the tide that he will take care of you financially when you put him first listen to me his word is full of his promises guys the enemy wants you to be overwhelmed right now the enemy wants you to focus on the problem he wants you to give up on god he, he wants, wants you to, you to quit god. what you're yeah he wants you to question god he wants you to quit on your relationship with god like what's the point in going to church nothing good is happening nothing's falling into place why should I read my word every day? It's just a book that was written 2,000 years ago. How does it apply to me? Listen, the enemy is a liar. He wants you to go off and do your own thing rather than standing on faith. But listen to me. The Bible says that we walk by faith. I love this. And not by sight. Why? Because, because faith is the things that are hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can't see what God's doing tomorrow. I have zero idea what God is going to do tomorrow. I know what I have planned, right? You know what you have planned, but we don't know what God has planned. But let me tell you something. God wants you to walk in perfect peace every day. How do you do that? You fully rely on him. You fully trust God. To say, God, I see the problem. Listen to me. Abraham saw the problem. This scripture clearly tells us he knew what the problem was. He knew he was old. But his faith said God is able. Whatever you're facing today, whatever the circumstances are surrounding your life, you need to realize and recognize the problem. Journal the problem. Write it down. And then write with it. Write down, believe, stand on, but my God is able. That's right. Maybe it's a physical element. Can God not heal? Does he always? No. But can he? Yes, he can. His word tells us very clearly that Jesus took stripes for our healing. Can he meet your physical need? Can he meet your financial need? Can he rebuild a broken marriage? Can he restore the relationships in a family that have been destroyed? The answer is yes. But you have got to trust God through this process. That's right.
So just because it seems like things aren't working out, it doesn't mean that God's not at work. That's right. He is always, always, always working behind the scenes. If you've trusted him, if you've put him first, yes. if you're in right positioning with him, Come if on. you have made your, your walk with him about relationship and not religion. Come on. He's working behind the scenes, and he really is bringing alignment, but he wants you to get the right perspective. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to see things the way he, he sees, sees things. You walk by faith. You don't walk by sight. So we want to pray for you today. Um, I don't know what situation you're going through right now. You do, and God does, and that's all that matters. And so we just want to pray for you. We want to pray about uh, your situation. We want to pray for, for this year. I know we're halfway into January uh, as this is being videoed, but we have a whole year ahead of us. Right. And God wants you to realize that he is lining things up for you. He's lining things up. You just need to trust him and you need to believe that all of these things are going to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You are called according That's to right. God's yes, purpose. You are. you are called by his purpose. That's right. Now just love him. Just love him and trust him and believe that it's all coming together. God's got this. All right, so we're just going to pray for you right now. Let's just, uh, let's go to God. Father, we just, we thank you so much, Lord, for this time together as a church family. Uh, God, I pray for the individual that is watching this video today. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just, just wrap your arms, God, around him or her. I pray, God, that, 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 this individual would feel your peace, your protection, your provision, your power. God, that they would be reminded today that, that it, it, it doesn't matter what they see with their human eyes. It, do, it doesn't matter how they feel about the situation. It doesn't matter how it, it seems things are, God. What matters is your promises. What matters is that God, we know that when we, when we are in right positioning with you, God, that you are aligning things. You're, you're, you're bringing things into alignment right now. So we just thank you for that. We thank you, God, that you are aligning things right now in each and every person's life that's watching this video. We pray, God, that we would just run to you, that we would trust you, that we would love you, that we would be reminded that we are called according to your purpose, and that we would have the faith of Abraham, God. Yes. We would believe that what man says is impossible. When our circumstances seem impossible, God, with you, all things are possible. And so we trust you today. We thank you, God. We thank you for lining these things out. With heads bowed and eyes closed, we just want to speak to the person right now who might be saying, I, 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 am, I am unclear. I am, I am not convinced that my relationship with God is, is sure I'm not convinced that, that uh, if I were to die today that, that heaven really would be my home. I would tell you right now that you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. He loves you. He's knocking on your heart's door. He's asking to come in and be the Lord of your life. Won't you do it? Won't you just open up the door and let him in today? Will you admit, like I did many years ago, like Misty has done, that you are a sinner in need of a Savior? His name is Jesus. Believe that he's the Son of God. Confess him as Lord of your life. He was raised from the dead after three days. He overcame hell and the grave and your sins by the blood that he shed on the cross for you. He loves you. Now just call out to him today and believe and you can be saved. Would you do that? If you're doing that right now, I want you to comment in the comment section below. If you're on Facebook, if you're online today, comment uh, as well in the feed and just say, I'm all in. Or you can click the button above uh, that, that signifies that you're raising your hand to receive Christ. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for these that have given their lives to Jesus. We pray, God, protection over them as they make these steps to begin living for you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 And that is absolutely the I best I love praying decision. that prayer. It is the best You know, decision. last Sunday online, four people gave their lives to Christ. That's right. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. I just thank God. And it is the absolute best decision you'll ever make in your life. And if you just prayed that prayer, 
we want to send a gift to you. We call it our Next Step Kit. It's going to have a brand new Bible. Yep. Not quite this big, but it'll have a brand new Bible in it. That's a big honking Bible. It is. As well as a message from Brian and I helping you to know what's my next step. Because yep. we want you to be successful in your walk with Christ. All right? Now listen to me. Today is January 19th. Mm -hmm. So that means that we are Tomorrow's almost... Tomorrow's your birthday. Well, I wasn't going to say January that. January <laughs> 20th. Tomorrow is Misty's birthday. And she's probably going to eat cheesecake and drink coffee because wow. that's her thing. Because I do enjoy that. But listen, <laughs> the 21 day challenge is coming to an end. But I hope that after 21 days of putting God first in the God first challenge, that you are not just going to end that challenge and like, woohoo, I made it, but that you're actually finished my 21 days. Going to stay the course because the reason we did that is it takes. 21 days to form a habit. We wanted you to form a habit of putting God first. And I want to tell you something. And your life is only as great as the habits you have. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can count how many times I got cut off in a message. <laughs> no, listen, what I wanted to say is how proud I am of, I have seen kids yeah. in our church who took the challenge. I have seen teenagers yep. in my own home and in yours who took the challenge and they have been reading their They've word. Reading their word every day. I am hearing worship music coming from my kids' bedrooms, which makes me so happy to know that they're taking this challenge. Guys, listen, it will rock your world. It will change your life. It is a very simple thing. And if you say, I'm just joining for the first time today, what was the God First Challenge? We challenged you to five minutes in your word, five minutes of worship, turn on a worship song, and five minutes in prayer. Keep doing it. Put God first. And listen. If you haven't tried putting God first in your finances by giving back to God, by returning to God what's already his, that 10%, that tithe, I want to challenge you to do that because I cannot tell you how incredible the blessings of God will be upon your life when you say, God, not only do I say with my mouth that you're first, but with my actions, with my pocketbook, which is close to our hearts, right? So today, there's two easy ways that you can give since we're online. I want to jump in. It's a true test of the heart, isn't it? Yes, it is. Isn't, as pastors, isn't that how we are able to identify when people truly... You really when, get it. Yeah, when their mouth meets up with their faith, Yeah. we're like, okay, they get it. Because let me tell you because something. Because we don't hey, want to give up our money for... We're pastors, and there's been so many times in our life when we got paid... And if you laid all the bills out, there's not enough money. There wasn't going to be enough money. The bills. Absolutely. But you know what we did first? Because we just made a decision before we were ever married. That was a decision I had made. That was a decision he had made. We're going to trust God. God is first. So the first 10% of that paycheck is going back to God. It, no thought. It doesn't mean no. you don't manage your money. Don't be an idiot. That's right. <laughs> God gives us wisdom, and the scriptures are chucked full of 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 uh, directives that help us to know how to manage the and money 90%. because it's not ours it's his right. and he wants you to take care of what he's given you so don't say well i'm going to tithe but then i'm not going to take care of any of you're probably right. going to be broke right because he wants you to take care of what he gives you yes. it's it's right stewardship that's right the money word management. of god is is there's over 2400 scriptures on that topic okay jesus talked about money more than anything else because yep. he knew how close it was to us but listen I challenge you, just try it. Just test God in the tithe. Give back what belongs to him. Listen, there's two easy ways to give today. Two, two, there's two. two. <laughs> you can text your giving by just texting MMC to 77977. Yep. Okay? Follow the prompts. Or you can go online to our website or through the app, and you can give that way. Listen, we love you. We want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. And we are excited this week. Be watching Facebook on Wednesday, yeah. we'll and we will let you know on what's going on, how the inspection goes, and whether or not we are going to open our new doors next week. But guys, we are going to have a big, huge, massive party <laughs> celebration on the 26th next week right. when we get in. All right, I'm okay. just going to pray a blessing pray over out. you, Father God. Thank you for this beautiful thank day you, that you've given us, God. Thank you, Lord, that we have these oh, wonderful gosh. families, God, that we can gather together in our homes and still worship you. God, it doesn't matter whether we're in a church building, under a tree, in a field, or in our living room. God, we worship you wherever we are. And God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. God, help us to grow stronger in our faith, no matter what the external pressures and problems and circumstances surrounding us. God, we choose to stand on your promises and grow day in and day out. God, thank you. Bless these families in their homes today. 
bless the inspection over Mountain Movers Church. Yes, God, God, I pray, Father God, for your favor. Lord, let us be in your new home, your new home, next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We love you guys. We hope to see you next week.